still stuck in that rabbit hole, what does it take to break these? Stick around, we're going to find out. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Scott, Edge of 3D, and uh, as you've seen last week, I got off into a rabbit hole about printing these test pieces to test the strength of threaded parts and direct thread versus heat set, so on and so forth. And the, the there's no bottom to the rabbit hole. Still at it. So I reprinted everything. Um, PPS carbon fiber and the uh, ABS. Ran a lot of tests. Now, um, so far I've only been running tests on three part samples. I have to change that to five part samples because three part samples is not accurate. Um, if you have an outlier, then it's two to one and that, that's not accurate testing. But we'll get, you know, I'll, I'll get to that later. It takes time. Um, Every, every pull on the machine is, is a few minutes and, you know, here's 24 pulls and if you figure uh, three to four, up to five minutes per pull, especially if I'm videoing it, it, it adds up to a lot of time. So, moving on from that. Um, so, went through and I printed a full set of parts on the x-axis, which is laying down and a full set of parts on the z-axis, which is standing up. Half of them I annealed, half of them are as printed. On the parts that I annealed, I put the heat sets in first and then annealed the parts. Turtle Crawler brought that up because the last time around, I annealed the parts and then put the heat sets in. He said, you should really put the heat sets in first, then anneal the parts. I did, it made a difference. So, moving on from that. Um, the, the first one of each one of these pulls that I did, I'll, I'll pop it up here or there, um, whether it was printed this way or this way, and then and you'll see the, you know, I, I do slow-mo videos of every single break that I do, but you know, only need the first one, and, and the ones where it just pulls the threads out, it's really anticlimactic. Um, breaking is more fun. Here's a break somewhere. Um, and as far as annealing goes, um, I followed Polymaker's recommendation on the PPS carbon fiber 125 degrees for 16 hours. I could not find any recommendation for the ABS, so I came up with my own program, which is 95 degrees for 10 hours. And there's parts in there annealing right now, ABS. I'll get to that in a little bit. And why. So, on the annealed parts, PPS carbon fiber, following their standard. ABS, I came up with my own. And let's just start right off the bat. Um, with direct threaded PPS carbon fiber printed in the X plane, which is flat like this, um, every one of them direct threaded in, pulled out. Um, the as printed raw, 54 to 55 kilograms of force for the threads to pull out, and annealed. This is one that's strange. Actually a lot lower on the annealed on these that were printed laying down like this um, for the direct thread. Um, a low of 35.4, a high of 54.8. So, but that 35.4 is an outlier. And what could be the cause of that is, you know, I have a double nut set here at four millimeters on this test piece. And the reason I do that is that's how tall the heat sets are. So I want to compare apples to apples. Four millimeters into a heat set, four millimeters into the raw plastic. So as I'm turning that in there, maybe I went a half a turn too far and I already started to fracture the threads and that lowered the breaking point. So 35.4 is an outlier, 48 to 54. So a little less on the anneal than on the as printed, but within the margin of error. So we'll move on to the heat sets. And heat sets raw as printed, and I set the heat sets at 400 degrees on the PPS parts, 300 degrees on ABS. As printed, unannealed, 
printed in this orientation. A low of 107, a high of 132, average around 120, 118 kilograms of force. That's a lot of force. On the annealed parts, I had one outlier, 171.5 kilograms. That is a hell of a lot of force um, for a little tiny three millimeter screw. I'm really surprised the stainless steel screw held up, but it, it did. 171.5 kilograms, that was an outlier. The other two were 124 and 129, so we're gonna call it 126 kilograms. So basically on the heat set as printed and annealed on the PPS carbon fiber printed in this orientation within the margin of error on both of them. So across the board, direct red and heat set annealed raw within the margin of error. Printed on the Z-plane, which is standing up like this. Now, the direct threaded ones all broke on a layer line. They did not pull out. Raw, 90, well we had one outlier at 76.9, I can't explain that one, but 90 to 93 kilograms of force unannealed, annealed, 92 to 94 kilograms of force. So no real difference in the layer adhesion on the PPS carbon fiber annealed versus raw. Now we get into the heat sets. Heat sets unannealed, every one of them pulled out at between 76 and 82 kilograms. The heat set pulled out of the part. On the annealed parts, put the heat sets in, then annealed the part. A low of 91 kilograms, a high of 101 kilograms, and those were all layer line breaks. You'll see right here. Now, moving on to the ABS. So, printed on the X-plane, like this, direct threaded, 36 to 36, <laughs> 36 kilograms, the threads all pulled out. That was on the raw. On the annealed, where I ran it at 95 degrees, 10 hours, 39 to 41. That's a significant difference when you were talking the difference between 36 and 41 kilograms or 36 and 39, three kilograms is close to 10%, 8%. So five kilograms is gonna be over that. That's a significant difference between the as printed and annealed. Anneal your ABS parts, threads are stronger. Um, now, when we go to the heat sets, not as much difference. As printed, Pulled out on all three of them between 84 and 94 kilograms of force to pull the threaded heat set out. On the annealed parts, 88 to 94 kilograms, so within the same range as the unannealed. The difference was is two of the three on the annealed parts, instead of it just pulling out, it actually, the, the part separated like this. So the heat sets in here and it, it separated the part like that. Popped it out of there. I'll put videos up here. You'll, you'll see as I'm talking about each one of those, the video will show it pulling out. Now is where we get into why that oven is completely full of ABS parts being annealed again. In the Z-plane, standing up like this, which also tests layer adhesion because we're pulling as the layers are printed. Um, every single one of them on ABS broke on a layer line. Some of them broke down below where the heat sets and threads were. Some of them broke in the middle of the heat sets, but every one of them broke on a layer line. As printed, raw, 39 to 43 kilograms, and it was a layer line break. And that was as printed, raw, direct threaded in, printed in the Z-plane, standing up. Printed in the Z-plane, standing up, annealed 95 degrees for 10 hours, went from 
basically on average 40 kilograms of force to 68 kilograms of force to break the layer line. That is huge. That is a huge number. That's not within margin of errors. That's not within sample differences. That is an absolute undeniable difference. Annealing the ABS changed the layer line adhesion massively. That oven's clear full of parts. I'm going to retest ABS annealed and unannealed next week. I promise. Same results with the heat sets. Unannealed. Broke on a layer line, started a low of 45 kilograms, a high of 51 kilograms. When we go to the annealed part, I had an outlier at 52 kilograms. That one I can't explain, but the other two were 78 and 85. Again, more reason why I need to do five samples instead of three, and that's what I'm going to start doing is five samples instead of three. So that is it for the heat set testing just in itself. Um, I got some answers that I wanted, which, which way is best to test the heat sets, whether they're printed laying down or standing up. Um, I'm going to continue to print them laying down so that they're threaded in across the um, um, print orientation instead of with the orientation. So uh, I'm going to continue to print these on the X-plane for testing. Um, if there's a particular material you want me to print on the Z-plane, I can, but for the most part, Z-planes break on the layer line, so the layer adhesion uh, testing that I will be doing kind of covers printing on the Z-plane, so it's really not necessary. So that's it for these for now. Coming up next is I'm retesting all this ABS, and what I currently have printing is uh, two different brands of PET carbon fiber, and I will be printing though, or testing those exactly the same. They'll be as, as printed and annealed on both brands. Uh, full set of tests. Um, everything from pull out to, to layer line to material strength as well as the uh, IZOD test and uh, lots more breaking stuff. So those are fun. Uh, breaking videos are really fun. And uh, let's see a few other things I want to get to. Um, every Saturday 12 o'clock noon Pacific time, 2 p.m. my time, uh, 3DHP Jerry has a maker hangout where he hosts a live hangout and a lot of us in the 3D printing maker community, YouTube community, um, we jump in and out of his stream there for three or four hours and you know it's a chance where you can hop into the comment section and ask questions and get answers in real time. Um, we try to Stay focused on the maker type stuff, which is 3D printing, machining, um, laser. A lot of laser guys on there. Um, some really cool stuff. A lot of cool people hanging out on there. Um, put a link in the video description down below. Again, every Saturday, 12 noon Pacific time. You know, jump on Jerry's stream and watch that. Um, I've been jumping on his stream for a couple of years now, off and on. I'm not always on there, but... Um, you know, if I'm watching it in the background while I'm working on something else and somebody brings it to my attention that somebody's on there asking me a question, I can jump on there. So, um, 3D HP, link down here. One more thing. As of filming right now, I'm less than 10 subscribers away from 5,000. And i got to celebrate. So... Sometime in the next month, I will host a short live stream. Uh, there'll be some prizes, giveaways, whatever you want to call them. Um, LDO Motors is kicking in some stuff. Fabrico, uh, of course, Polymaker. Um, JLC 3DP, which is uh, JLC PCB. It's their 3D printing side of their business. Um, I don't have anything here right now, but they've uh, metal, metal 3D printed some parts for me for my testing machine. So, awesome company. And um, I'm sure there'll be some others. Um, who knows? I mean, I, I've got about a month I'm going to put this together. Obviously, it'll be after the fact. But to each and every one of you that subscribed, we did it. We got to 5,000. I never thought I'd get to 500 when I started this how many years ago. So uh, it's awesome. And uh, got a big, huge boost about a month ago from ModBot Daniel when he linked my channel on his 
um, when he was talking about the uh, PPS carbon fiber. Um, so that's it. And hit that uh, thumbs up thingy somewhere. I think it's always down here. There's a little thumbs up thing you can push. There's a, there's a little bell icon you can push and that'll notify you when I drop another video. Um, subscribe to the channel. And as always, leave a comment. I don't care if it's just a one word comment, you know. Hi, how are you? Love it, hate it. You talk too much. Uh, you need to show more of this. I don't care. Drop comments in there. It helps the algorithm. So there we go. That's it. Love each and every one of you that stick around all the way to the end. I talk a lot. I don't accomplish much, but we have a good time doing it. And as always, peace out.